It's wonderful to see such a big group of candidates and catechumens coming into the church. What a great blessing for our parish. One day, Ron was serving a hot meal at a soup kitchen. They were serving chili with two pieces of buttered bread on that particular day. A man came through the line who looked even more scruffy and broken than the others. Ron was overwhelmed by the stench. He said, like the pull of a magnet, my gaze went to the dirt and the dried blood on his hands. And before he realized what was happening, the man clasped Ron's hand in both of his hands. And he said, brother, I love you. Thanks for being here. And with that, Ron, after swallowing really hard, said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you came also. Ron tried to smile as the man shuffled over to one of the tables with his meal. The next man stepped up, and as Ron handed him a bowl of chili, a little bit of the chili spilled on Ron's hand. And without thinking, he licked it off. Then it hit him. That was the hand the other man had just clasped. And Ron momentarily froze, repelled to think that he had licked something that that smelly, dirty man had just touched. But it was a moment of great revelation for Ron. Because he said, at that moment, the light of awareness changed his vision and his heart was warmed with new understanding. Ron said, no longer was Jesus only the handsome man that I pictured in my mind and saw in paintings. He said, now he had a scarred, stubbled face, fingers that were stained yellow, he was dirty, he smelled bad, and he wore cast-off clothes, and I had just served him chili and bread. In our first reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 22, we see that the people had the responsibility to treat the widows and the children and the orphans the same way that God had treated them. And this shows us that our relationship with God is not just a vertical relationship, you know, just God and me, but rather it is an L shape. That is to say, it's God in me and you. It's God in me and you. Why? Because you give me an opportunity to express my love for God. This is what the gospel is getting at. Jesus responds to the scholar of the law. We would call him a lawyer. So he responds to the lawyer's question by saying, the greatest commandment is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So what Jesus is doing here is giving the greatest commandment, namely, to love the Lord your God, and then he is showing us how to do it in concrete terms of how to love the Lord. So if we say, I love the Lord, when we express that in our praise and in our worship by coming here to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, but we also express that praise by loving one another. In other words, God is expecting us to show him that we love him by the way we treat others. In feeding the hungry and the orphans, 
and taking care of the widows. That's how we show our love for God. It's our opportunity to express our love for God by loving the others at work or at school or on the playground or in every situation of our life. Are there people we meet daily that are less than lovable? I got news for you. We can't wait for them to become lovable, to love them. They may never become lovable, but we still must love them. We have an opportunity to love God in our neighbor. We've got an opportunity to love God in our families. Just the people that we contact every single day. As Catholics, nothing expresses this better than the focal point of our church. Think of the focal point. When you walk in those doors, what's the first thing you see when you walk in here? You see that ginormous crucifix. And that crucifix is the focal point that expresses this better than anything else. Why? Because what it says to us, greater love than this has no man that a man lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love than this has no man that a man lay down his life for his friends. So in this sense, the crucifix is a great sign for us to love God and to love our neighbor. The crucifix is the sign that tells us that we are lovable and we can't love unless we see ourselves as lovable. Think about this. When we look at that crucifix, it tells us that we are lovable. Why? Because when we look at that crucifix, what does it say to us? It says, you are worth dying for. You're lovable. And if we don't recognize ourselves as lovable, we will never give ourselves away. If we don't see ourselves in that way, we won't be able to give ourselves to another because we don't think we're worth it. But when we look at that crucifix, we can say without a shadow of a doubt, I matter. I am lovable. Secondly, what that crucifix does for us, besides being a sign of love, the crucifix is, is an invitation to love. Again, it screams to us, love one another as I love you. It teaches us that we can help others by our love, just as he helped us by his love. And thirdly, the crucifix is a revelation about love. It tells us that love entails suffering. Love entails suffering. Love without pain is a lie. Love without pain is a lie. Think of this. It's painful to be patient when a loved one shouts at us. It's painful to be forgiving like the father of the prodigal son and welcome back home a wayward child. It's painful to be humble like the son in the same parable and admit that we were wrong. You know, you, the, you know that, that thing that you see on food, that, that stamp on food products that says, this product may be harmful to your health. If I had the authority, I would love to go to the courthouse and stamp every marriage license with the words, love entails suffering. I'd like that on every marriage license so that people can think about that from the very moment they join themselves in marriage. So to fulfill the two greatest commandments that Jesus refers to in the gospel today, we have a constant reminder 
in the crucifix. It is a sign that Jesus loves us. It is an invitation to love others. And it is a revelation about love, namely, that love entails suffering. Mother Teresa said it beautiful, beautifully in the prayer that she lived by, which you can find in the devotional prayer cards in the pews. But I want to close with that prayer because I think it says it succinctly and elegantly. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spent years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help, but may attack you if you help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have, and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you've got anyway.